say. Hey, everybody, welcome to Cape Harbor. I'm Steve. I'm Mike. I did it again. I think you need to go to a doctor for this because this is obviously because yeah. kind of like, I, I think there's something going on back here that you yeah. thought you forgot. And you thought you buried deep inside and it's coming out in this nervous hand. I'm like, yeah, I'm like George Costanza. I'm like, I got, I got a tech. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> this is great. This is like the third episode that we've like started off <laughs> bringing attention to the hand thing. Yeah. People probably don't even notice, but yeah. Uh, anyway, guys, uh, this is it's it's wet. Well, we're you know what you right? should do. You should, whenever I do that, you should put like magical stars or something there in the editing. You know, like in this in these COVID times, I, I'm not the editor I used to be. I, I have a lot going on in my mind right now. Yeah. I, I'll, I'll, you know, I'll do it though. I'll, I'll do it. Don't worry. I gotta tell you. Doing the editing on the video game stuff, making sure you match up the DVD recorder with my camera when I do it, when I'm doing the editing on that, is so frustrating. I was so proud of myself, guys, when I when I matched up Golden Axe with my camera. When you're a few seconds off, it it completely ruins your day. Yeah, I think everybody is beautiful. I, I only heard one. My, my sons only made give me one feedback and said that the screens you put are too small. They can't see your beautiful face enough, and he wants to see more of that Adonis face. They said, make the screen bigger so I can see Mike more. But that's my son said anyway. Yeah. I said, well, you're know, quiet, buddy. You know? I mean, I am. I'm, I'm, I'm technically his uncle now, so I guess I'll, I'll have to fulfill his wish. Oh, that was funny. I was watching. Uh, we're doing, obviously, we're doing a review show, uh, two Open Comics review show today, a weekly review show. Um, I, I was actually watching the one from last week that you and Patrick did, which I very much enjoyed. My mm -hmm. son was sitting next to me, my littlest one, Luke, um, and he was saying, um, he, he goes, um, Dad, the thing, the problem with your videos is, is that they're uh, boring. And I go, <laughs> and I go, why are they boring? And he goes, because you. I go, well, give me some points. What can I do better? Is it, yeah. Like the quality. He goes, well, no. He goes, maybe not talk so much. Oh. And he goes, and maybe uh, not talk about comics. Oh. And I oh. go, oh, okay. And I go, what else? And he goes, he goes, maybe do like you know video games and maybe um, do ads for FGTV. And he goes, and that way FGTV will. <laughs> do ads for you and I'm like ha huh, this is my, my six year old son too this time. Yeah. And I'm, like, I'm like okay tell me more about how to like you know uh, get, get my <laughs> my shit all up and going and stuff. yeah this uh, funny. Th did he not see any of my Friday Night Game episodes we talk about video games then it, uh, it was funny he, he, I, I, like, like what's the problem what's your issue with the, with the videos he goes, they're too long and they're too boring and you talk about comics and I'm <laughs> like well the whole video is why I talk about comics so yeah. I don't know to tell you buddy but um he, I don't know if he, you know, I better check to see if he's subscribed right now because he's talking a lot of shit. Yeah. <laughs> uh, speaking of which, if you're new to our channel and you like what you see, make sure you hit the like button uh, and make sure you smash that subscribe button um, and uh, hit the bell to so make sure you get notifications so you don't have to go, you know, do the work. Uh, we'll do the work for you and you get notifications yeah. for, for more Cake Burger delicious goodness. And, and subscribe uh, just for bath units too. I'm a narcissist. I love good and bad stuff, you know, you know, just give it to me. Ask my wife. I love to argue, yeah. so, and, and I am a know-it-all. If, you, if, you, if you're if you're already a fan of the show and you've been watching the tons of videos, tons of content we have on here, obviously mm -hmm. it's pretty apparent to you right now that I am a know-it-all. So, so don't be afraid to, to engage me. It's, yeah. it's, it's 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 comics. I'm not gonna take it personally. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, on to the show, Mike. Uh, we're reviewing yeah. today four comics today. Uh, I know you're doing uh, one Marvel, one DC. I'm mm -hmm. also doing one Marvel, one DC. Uh, we don't have Patrick with us today. Uh, there's a little scheduling conflict, but uh, we'll make do without without his sage like knowledge yeah. of all things uh, pure and, and good in comics. Uh, but you want know, the and line? What, we said this last week. The biggest, I think, help rose over because we both gave really great reviews for both for our books we did. And if and if any of you guys have remember us from our comic couch days, we absolutely ripped apart everything. That was I, I actually I com I commented not on the uh, the cake burger account but on the uh, my own personal uh, YouTube uh, Google account that I was actually I I, uh, I think Patrick's review of um uh, three Joker was right on the money that, that's the first time I've actually completely agreed with Patrick one hundred percent when it comes to uh, comics not that I just agree with Patrick all the time but we're definitely coming from different schools a, a lot of, we have a lot, a lot of things we, we we agree on a lot of things we disagree on too but uh, i very much enjoyed that, that last week's episode and I, we've also been getting guys. Some, we've also been getting some weird comments from like penis enlargement and like these weird like oh i've been requesting those oh god okay. uh, <laughs> but anyway i mean i'll take it comments to comments but i'm like i i deleted two of them i'm like what what? What are these? Oh, just Mike, stop, I'm, you know, I'm stop deleting them. I'm trying to, like, you know, I'm trying right. to get information here. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll keep it. Listen, I, I saw two half-naked women on our on the little picture, so I was like, 
I don't know if we want that on our site, but hey, I'll keep it next time. It's maybe a bot. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, uh, we're gonna start a review show right now. Um, I'm, although I'm, I'm melancholy that Patrick's not here. He's been hogging the Batman books, and yeah. I'm gonna. I get to finally record. I get to finally review a Batman book right now. So I'm gonna and I'm gonna review a Batman book that I actually enjoy. It's crazy. Mike's Mike's reviewing a Batman book too. Spoiler alert. Um, from first, the first one we're gonna review though, I'm gonna review uh, Batman number ninety eight by uh, James Tinian and Jorge Jimenez. Um, this is uh, part four of the Joker War and, and the main Batman book. Um, we saw uh, obviously um, Patrick went over the last issue. We have Batman still kind of recouping from the uh, from Punchline's uh, uh, mixed uh, toxin, which is half Scarecrow, half Venom. Had a part part Venom, part Scarecrow toxin, part Joker. Uh, Toxins. It's a nice medley of uh, all things famous in Batman as far as poisons go. Um, he's still hallucinating Alfred. Um, uh, I remember Patrick saying that he thought that uh, Alfred was going to turn into an AI. In this comic, we're, we're definitely giving closure to that fact that uh, uh, Alfred will not be an AI whatsoever. He's mm-hmm. very clearly, both Bruce and him are aware that it's a figment of his imagination through the hallucination. Um, we go through some great, great father-son chemistry between Bruce and Alfred. Um, and we finally get an end. I, I think we're, we're starting to see an end now to, I, I know a trope that you don't like, Mike, is, is, is the brooding, like, you know, um, prepared for anything back God Batman. Where, uh, so it means I can, I can like Batman again. Yeah, yeah, Mike, I, I don't know if you're reading this book or if you're just kind of flipping through it. This is the bat. This book reminds me of like when you were a kid and you were like, Oh, I'm, comics so maybe i'll maybe i'll like i see the batman movie maybe i'll like batman comics yeah. this comic is so much for, for old readers for young readers new lapsed I, uh, old readers i've been hearing a lot of great things about it even though i still to this day i'm sick of always it being this big joker war big joker story arc um with the fact that it's getting positive reviews from pa- patrick i love you and you, you sometimes you can be a negative nally i love you to death um but him giving it positive reviews and you giving it positive reviews I think I'll definitely pick it up. I'll read it online or I'll pick up the trade when it comes I, out. I love this book. I, I haven't loved this book this much since like Judd Winnick was, was doing it. Um, this is, and that's back in like, like the early 2000s, something like that. But in no, this that issue, basically. to be a Batman fan. In, in this issue, we, um, and it's, wait, we don't see Joker at all this entire issue. Um, he's, and, and honestly, through this whole Joker world, we, we haven't seen him much in the main Batman titles. We're mostly in kind of like the satellite titles and everything. Uh, we had a great throwdown between Harley Quinn and Punchline where. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know a lot of people are kind of thinking like Punchline's kind of overhyped and they're kind of making her like this, like, you know, like, you know, right out of the gate can like beat anybody. But uh, Harley Quinn stands, it's, it's a great fight. I'm not going to spoil too, too many things, who wins or whatever, but it's a great fight. Um, Batman, the, 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 we finally get closure to the Alfred thing where he's trying to kind of clear the toxins from his body and stuff like that. Um, and speaking of what I was talking about before, how we have Batman who's constantly brooding and constantly thinks he has to like take responsibility for everything. We get this great scene where hallucinated Al- Alfred just smacks Bruce in the face and just tells him like you can't like he goes listen you can't save everybody and he goes and you could your parents die and you never could have saved them he goes stop mm-hmm. taking responsibility for your parents he goes you couldn't save them then and you, and you never would have been able to save them so stop feeling guilty about your parents dying and what can you do now going forward with that and it's, it's a great word like you know I, I posted the actual pic- I, I, I posted the picture on Twitter or something like that um, and there was the scene where, where he goes, now get up and tell, tell them who you are. And just this great scene where Batman comes out of, the, out of his coma or whatever, and Jack Watts, like, you know, what's going on? And, and he goes, how, how can you do that? And he does the whole, I'm Batman, because I'm Batman. But when he does it, Jorge Jimenez does this great thing where his cape's out, and it says, I'm Batman, in his cape. But it's right. a great stylistic, like, I mean, it's just kind of goofy, kind of like Adam West 60s show, uh, but it's, when I saw that, I had the biggest shit-eating grin on my face. Like, I'm like, this is such a, like, for a Batman comic, it's supposed to be dark and brooding and goth. It's so much fun fucking superhero. Like, James, for, for a team, there was supposed to be a fill-in between Tom King and whoever took over afterwards, which I think I think going to be saying on the book longer than we thought. Um, wow, it has, it has these guys, like, become, like, a, something very, very special as far as uh, Batman and uh, the creative teams go. Um, like I said, the, the art is beautiful. Uh, Jorge Eminem is, 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 for me, for my money, is, is the best artist working at, at uh, um, DC right now. And the colors are beautiful. It's like, you know, it's, it's, it's dark and creepy and gothic how, how a Batman comic should be, but it's also bright, like, like a Joe Schumacher movie's almost, almost like a Blade Runner type. Like, you know, it's, it's, 
it's so good. I, I, I love it so much. I can't, I can't sing the praises of this book enough. Um, we're two issues away from issue 100. I think Tinny was supposed to stay. I think that's the end. I, 100 or 101 is the last issue, I think, of a Joker War. Um, Mike, you, 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 you got to catch I, up on I, this. I, I think, guys, um, this is going to be one of those things where I admit when I'm wrong, and I can admit when I'm wrong. Um, I'm, if everyone, all the good positive reviews that I'm hearing about this, and, and you know, if I, if I get the okay from, from you and Patrick, I think I'm definitely going to stop picking this book up and reading it or reading it online. Um, I, don't, I don't think I'll be buying the physical copy because I'm clearly running out of space for my comic books. So, um, but uh, I think I'll definitely go back and start picking these books up. If I mean, if it's going back to the Batman that I enjoy, um, you know, self-contained Batman, the it is. stupid God Batman type crap. Um, and I, I didn't know, I didn't really care when he's prepared, always prepared. I, he, Batman's always kind of been always prepared. But not the so much where I'm prepared enough where I can take down the Justice League, you know, type right. of stuff. Well, that, that story you're talking about kind of makes sense. But as far as him, like, killing Darks, like, Batman beating Darkseid, yeah. come on. <laughs> you know? um, yeah, I wouldn't say you're wrong with that. I mean, it, it, I mean you I, you know what? I'm going to speak your language, Mike. You, you're, I'm, me and you are both big Spider-Man guys. Mm -hmm. I, I, I'm going to take my hat off and kneel to you as, as the, the biggest Spider-Man connoisseur. If you would really enjoyed uh, Dan Slott's Spider-Man Big Time, yep. or when Nick uh, Nick Spencer first took over Spider-Man and kind of like you know like did an apology tour for what came before, you would love yeah. this book right now because it's very much like you know um, James Tinian's like taking stuff from the song came, but also like you know the things you didn't like. Hey, sorry about that, but we're we're gonna fix these these things for you so you're gonna enjoy yeah. it more. And and I get it. The the that, the Snyder Batman. I know a lot of people crap on. I know the popular thing is the crap on Tom King, uh, internet people. Um, but it. it's just, yeah, <laughs> especially, especially now, I, well, I mean, before we did all that stuff with Jay Lee, all that crap he, you know, posted on Twitter, but, um, it's just not my Batman. Just like, it's, I, 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 I kind of put everything towards Star Wars. Like the current Star Wars isn't our Star Wars. We, it wasn't really that good. But there's fans that love that, and I respect that. And I respect the fact that fans love God, Batman, and, uh, you know, always being prepared to take down the Justice League type of nonsense. Um, and, and I respect that, guy. So don't, don't think that I'm – I think that because you like Batman, that, that style Batman, that you don't know what you're talking – you do. You, you like that. I respect that, you know. I, I do like that in, in small doses, though. It's like yeah. I, I, we've, I've been, we've been dealing with that since around 1996 now, yeah. or even it's, it's enough. Now, time, time to switch gears a little bit. So, as far as this book goes, you know what I don't respect? I can't respect anyone who thinks this because, like, oh, well, Kryptonite. Batman can't beat Superman. No. He doesn't have Kryptonite on. He, he might have him on all the time, but you know what? There's gonna be times where even with a Kryptonite ring, Superman can still beat him. There, I said. Yeah. It. Um, as far as Batman, uh, the main side, Batman issue 98. Two big, big, big thumbs up. Mm -hmm. um, and, yeah, so, I mean, for, for all you guys complaining about all DC cares about is Batman. Why is it, they, they put so much love to Batman? Read this comic right now, and, and it's, it's justified as far as I'm concerned, as far as this comic goes. And also the, the uh, comic that Patrick reviewed uh, last week, uh, Three Jokers also. It's also an excellent tale. Um, but let's move on to the next uh, issue, Mike. Uh, what, are you, what are you reading? So uh, my bad book is – which. Uh, is Batman number four, The Avengers Continue, which is part seven on digital. So this is this review or this this my partake on this is kind of late because I know uh, part eleven is already out digital because this is a digital first book. Uh, but I really only been collecting the um, this is number three, uh, but I, I haven't been issue four yet. I read it online, part four. Um, so. I apologize in advance that these you may already know what I'm talking about, but this, uh, yeah, you know what? This is the book I pick. It, 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 it is what it is, guys. If you're working their own paces, you know. So this book is by, uh, where is it? I got my handy handy notes. Paul Denny of the Adventures of Batman fame and Batman Beyond, the Tim Verse. Yeah, so to Alan speak. Burnett, too, right? Alan Burnett and Ty Templeton is the artist. Um, the, his artwork has been phenomenal on this. It's almost like he drew the animation style from uh Bruce the, Tim the style. yeah um yeah very bruce tim style uh almost like exactly the same thing um this book the, the great thing about this this whole story is that and correct i could be wrong guys i haven't uh 
watched the Justice League Unlimited every episode so far. I've watched what? most of the episodes, but I know. I know. Um, I've seen most of them. I don't remember them introducing um, Deathstroke or um, Arizona. Oh. They, 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 they didn't. Um, but I, 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 I know they, they brought him in Teen Titans, but that's not part of the Timverse, I don't think. I, I don't want to spoil things for you because you're a little behind the series, but um, there's some some characters that get introduced that you're gonna you're gonna like Mike. <laughs> and, uh, but right now they're introducing Deathstroke for the first time in the animated series. Um, what well, looks to be Jason Todd um, in the series, and um, now they're introducing Arizo, uh Paul. Uh, that, that's, Paul. What, that's what I was gonna say. You see the action figure, the animated uh, version of Asriel? Not yet. Oh, it's good but, but they, they they introduce in this again, guys. I apologize because I I I just been reading mainly reading the paper, um, or the physical copies. A lot of comics um, out there, guys. You know, yeah. it's tough to keep up. But uh, exactly, especially with everything that's going on. Plus, it's always part of delay because of COVID. So, um, but um, and at the end of this issue, they introduced uh, his Nightfall costume. Batman gives him the Nightfall costume, which was. Phenomenal! I think I've seen that costume. The yeah, action figure of that one thing. That's about yeah, that's a little. I, I can't get <laughs> a little nipple squeak when I saw that. <laughs> um, but this book has been fantastic. I don't know since, why I said uh, that? Yeah, <laughs> Dude, I just want to see your nipples. Come on. <laughs> no. um, uh, this book has been fantastic since issue one. Um, it's set like I said. It's set in the uh, Timverse, the Bruce Tim Paul Dini universe. Um, it's like it's picking up right at right when the series ended. You know what I mean? It's been great. It definitely takes place before uh, the Justice League stuff, I believe, or very close to it. Yeah, I, th- I think this is supposed to take place after like, the Batman Superman Adventure is one of them. WB. Yeah, I think this is like what? See, this might be technically season five or six. Something like that, yeah. yeah. Um, I can't recommend this book enough. Um, I mean, after your, your glowing and positive review of uh, the current Batman books, I'm definitely going to start going back to reading those, but the reason why I, I picked this book and like it so much, one, because I love that universe so much. And it's self-contained Batman that you guys know that I love. Yep. Um, and the artwork's been fantastic. The story's been fantastic. It's almost, and I, I was afraid because I saw some of the covers when they first were saying this book was going to come back, that it was going to be more of a comic book style artwork as opposed to the, you know, Timverse uh, artwork. Because even... Years ago, when they, when they, um, all the animated series did this, they did the Spider Man, they had a Spider Man book that was also with, yeah, the 90s, yep. And they did that with the Batman book, did the Batman Beyond, was also a comic book, and it's similar artwork to that, too. And, um, it's funny you should, it's funny you should mention that because, uh, you say you enjoy the self contained, like, you know, one and done stories. Yeah, Uh, I've been reading, uh, uh, the digital first Gotham Knights. Which is very much the same kind of thing, but it's, it's very reminiscent of the Batman animated series, which is very much, which is kind of based on the comic that uh, Batman the Adventure continues. Um, but it's more of a, like a more DC, like you know, like a style of art where it's like almost kind of like Jim Lee, Tony Daniel kind of style. But it's very much it reminds me of the animated series so much. Uh, but only for some reason, when I hear Batman's voice in this comic, I think of the Batman Brave and the Bold. Yeah, this guy doing it for some reason. For some reason, I do. But um, it's funny because that one's this is called the digital first called Gotham Knights, which was also the name of the uh, animated it's just, uh, comic book back in the '90s that you were talking about, where they did the um, adventures based on the animated series. That was also called Gotham Knights. Yeah. It's kind of weird. Like you know, I, I kind of perceive it as like you know the animated series type style of a Batman story, and it's, it's named after a, a book that was based mm. on the animated series. So, sorry, I mean, girls. No, no. <laughs> I mean, we're, we're, we do this here. We well, the tangent podcast off off the tangent, but uh, no, I can't recommend this book enough. Um, if you grew up watching this cartoon, um, or even reading the old, you know, the old uh, companion series to the cartoon, I uh, I give it two thumbs up myself. I highly recommend you guys pick this book up. Uh, most of you guys are probably already reading the digital first, so I'm way behind. And I'm gonna get caught up tonight, as a matter of fact, on it. But um. And you probably already know what's happening, so I apologize in advance. But two thumbs up for this uh, comic book. I've heard nothing but good things, and and honestly, I mean, Paul Dini and Alan, Alan Burnett writing Batman can't go wrong with mm. that, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, Alan Burnett also, I think, is the unsung hero of the animated universe. Not people, a lot of people say like, oh, Dini and Tim, Dini and Tim. Alan yeah. Burnett was like a, a huge creative force when it comes to all that uh, the Tim verse and the animated series and Justice League and yeah. all that stuff. Um, but cool, uh, two Batman books that are, that are, yeah. uh, that are, are, are pleasing and satisfying. Um, 
next book I'm going to read is my, my Marvel title, um, Wolverine number five. Um, I, I think I, I almost picked this book myself because if you guys remember, he, uh, Steve mentioned, um, you know, it being uh, the Fortnite. A certain issue is going to be in the uh, canon of Fortnite. Oh, oh, the Thor, the Thor one you're talking about? Well, even this book, I think it is. is Th- this be- book's, No, this book's not involved in any way. Donny Cates is the one who's involved in all that. So if it's written uh, by Donny Cates. It might have, have Fortnite and that stuff. Um, I think basically basically what Fortnite's going on is like, and I kind of mentioned it in the uh, Thor comic where Thor first becomes Black and Herald and they go on this little like uh, montage thing. Mm-hmm. This is just like an op- for the Fortnite series going on is basically an off-panel story. It doesn't show in the comic, uh, but it's uh, in, so right. that kind of thing. Um, and this one right I, here... Okay. Just to interrupt, Rogue, I'm sorry to interrupt. Yeah. My favorite Marvel stories where Galactus has heralds is when it's an actual Marvel character, like Thor, for, like Thor, for example. That's like good. Like, I'm, I, I want to read those issues or start reading it because yeah. it's Harold. Um, it's only a couple of issues. It's not that many issues in, so it's a good time to jump in. I mean, the best one ever is Aunt May. She was the best uh, Galactus Harold. Golden Oldie? Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, that, 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 that's I'm not gonna get that, that's a conversation for a different time. Yeah. Uh, Wolverine number five. Um, the last issue I talked about, we had uh, Omega Red uh, and ha- holding uh, he working for Dracula. Wolverine got ambushed inside this uh, shack in Canada. Um, he's in the ice. Um, we pick up this issue right now. Oh, by the way, the book's written by Benjamin Percy and art by Victor Bondanovich. Um, Bondanov, I'll, I'll talk about the art in a minute anyway. Um, but we pick up our Wolverines in this big block of ice on display. We have this guy doing a uh, monologue. It turns out it's Dracula. And basically what they're doing is, if you remember Blade, uh, I think Blade uh, Trinity, where they have mm. all the people inside those little Ziploc bag things, and they're kind of like harvesting for blood. Basically what they're doing is they're like, they're, Wolverine's blood has seen so much shit, and it's been so endurant that like, you know, it's like this really delicious type blood, something like that for Dracula. Um, and so... We have that the um, the vampires kind of leave them, like you know, to come back later, and they're doing their thing. Uh, we have these teenage vampires uh, come by, um, grab this block of ice. Um, they're of course they're kids, so they're clumsy. They're dropping the block of ice, it's getting little cracks every now and then. So they're taking off on these skidoos, and all of a sudden, like you see the claws pop out of the the, um, the ice. Wolverine breaks out um, and attacks them because he thinks, like, you know, they're just vampire kids trying to, like, get his blood, and they're like, oh, of course we'd like your blood, but, like, you know, that's not what we're all about. Like, you know, we're not, like, with the va- Dracula and all these guys. And he's like, what you doing? What are you doing for blood? Then you have to feed your vampire. And it shows all these, like, moose and wolves all sprung up, and they're kind of like, like we make do. Yeah. Um, so they go to take, which, uh, they go to take on Dracula. Uh, the kids end up, like, for the most part, dying, like that, but uh, Wolverine get, get, get kills the gang, like that. Not Dracula, but the Dracula's gang, something like that. And, um, we leave it off for another cliffhanger where he's coming after Omega Red. Um, it's, 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 you know, it's, it's obviously a next a chapter and like, an, like, I don't know how many parts of the story is going to be, like, you know, ongoing story. Um, and, um, but as far as, the, the comic's really good. Benjamin Percy's a really good, like, you know, uh, gruff, like, you know, he's, a, he's, he's made to write Wolverine. Mm. Uh, but the, what, the only thing I, um, I, my complaint is where Wolverine's frozen because, and Benjamin Percy has written two, um, podcast on Wolverine, where he's made a point to mention that if Wolverine is drowned, that that's the only thing that could hurt him. He could like either die or be brain dead. And Wolverine's actually a- afraid of the water because he would sink and like you know whatever would happen happen. But in this, Benjamin, the same writer who wrote that is also the one freezing him and drowning him in a block of ice, which I don't really understand. They did the same thing when he died during Charles Soule's run, where he's in case of animantium, I guess, or yeah. maybe those holes so he could breathe so he was kind of alive. I, I-, I forget how that kind of turned out. To be honest with you, it kind of fell off out during that time yeah but, um, i gotta say for it wasn't my i was expecting for the death of wolverine to be a lot better than it was yeah uh to him to like go down fighting all his enemies at once i mean now they're going to full detail he was losing his healing powers and whatnot but just for him to get encased by uh antimantium was so weak but yeah, you know, I, yeah. not dumb but whatever yeah. it, is what, it is they're not time marvel for a lot of shit if you ask me yeah um, as far as the art goes, Victor Bondanovich, uh, he, it's a hard name to say, um, he's very, very, very akin to uh, um, Ryan Stegman. Uh, mm-hmm. I think he's going to be a break, if he can keep his mouth shut on Twitter, <laughs> I think he's going to be a, a, a breakout star in, in Marvel. Now, the art's really good. Um, it's, it's, it's already very good, dynamic and stylized, and I think it's only going to get more polished and better as the years go on. I think yeah. it's a great show. I mean, him and Adam Kubert, what a, what a one-two punch on this book mm-hmm. um, as far as art goes. Um, 
And yeah, I mean, like, you know, I'm, I'm interested to see where this goes. I'd like to see classic, like, you know, Frank Miller, Chris, Chris Claremont, Larry Hammer type Wolverine back in full force. Um, so, I mean, as far as I'm, I can't wait for the next issue. It's, it's you yeah. know, Wolverine versus vampires in Canada. Where, where can you go wrong, you know? You really oh, can't. Although there is, oh, uh, one thing I forgot, the very last um, page on this um, the comic, there's, um, it shows Wolverine um, just like want, going through the woods like that, and all of a sudden this big rainbow light comes down and takes him away, which I thought was maybe the uh, rainbow bridge from Asgard, and it was kind mm. of playing in something going on with Thor. But I guess in the bottom side it says next um, Town of Swords, so I don't know if that has something to do with the uh, big Jonathan Hickman X Men crossover that's happening yeah. pretty, pretty much soon. So That is um, a 20 something part. Uh event yeah like, like i like i saw that and i'm like Ugh. that's an episode we can do because i mean if marvel goes you know you you come out of covid knowing that you know people are gonna have limited budgets limited capacity to buy things and you have like six half a dozen big crossovers back to back to back you have a new eternals comic coming out with literally 40 variant covers yeah. for eternals you know um <laughs> They're, they're trying to tie into the movie probably and like like uh like Marvel needs to stop with this forty thousand variants coverage. They, they never feel to disappoint when it comes to disappoint. Um but anyway, that's Wolverine number five. Um I'm gonna give you know, I, I'm it's not a complete story, it's an ongoing story, which I do like, but on, I mean um so I think the scene though is not complete, I'm gonna give it like, you know, I'm gonna give it one thumb mm-hmm. and and then like a fist. Yeah, so as far as my almost, I, almost uh, thumb. Yeah, I, I am enjoying Wolverine. I'm, I'm just waiting for it to like you know, uh, Percy and to, to kind of get his like, really get find his grooves with that. And like you know, I, I think it's gonna be something special. The same way Donnie Cates taking over Venom was. I think we're gonna see a nice renaissance of Wolverine coming up. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's my review for Wolverine number five from Marvel Comics. Um, I because I, I need to get my notes on my phone here to get my notes. So I'm doing Marvel Zombies. The uh, again, Marvel Zombies is back again, just in time for Halloween, I guess. Speaking, uh, of, yeah, Marvel- Don, speaking of Donny Cates, yeah, he, that, that was a big cliffhanger at the end of uh, Thor, where the, the Marvel Zombies are, are coming back. Mm. So this one is Marvel Zombies: The Resurrection by Philip K. Johnson and Leonard Kirk. Leonard um, Kirk is. I don't know who the writer is though. Uh, yeah, I've, I've never. I, I think I might have heard of uh, him from some one of the book. Uh, maybe. Maybe you, uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I think I Leonard heard him. Kirk used to do Robin. <laughs> really? Yeah, I, that's how I know him. Must have been towards the end of Robin. Uh, when it yeah, was, it's, it's, he wasn't the big. He wasn't His artwork seems pretty familiar. Yeah, uh, between Mike Riengo and Tom Grumon, I think. Well, he, he's a great artist because this book is, the artwork's really great in this. Um, so that th- this book um, is in another Earth, another Marvel Earth, very similar to the 616 because they all have the same costumes from the 616 counterparts. Uh, Wolverine's in his, uh, you know, yellow and brown suit. Mag- Magneto's in it. He's in his yellow, his white suit and whatnot. Um, so in this one, basically, they get a distress call from Captain Marvel in the Alpha Flight, and it's, like, interrupted and whatnot. So... Um, from so the Fantastic Four, Reed Richards gets the call and he gets you know the Avengers to come in and uh, well, not any any reserve members to come in. And he's they all basically they they get a bunch of heroes, not all of them. They get Cap, Thor, um, all the Fantastic Four. Um, who else did they get? But they didn't get all of them, so there's still heroes on Earth. And then they go off and did a stress call to see where it was coming from, and they find out that the Galactus is, Galactus is dead. When they get there, they realize that he's been hauled out, and they've been used as a spaceship. And that, and, and that, the That's zombie, virus, yeah. Basically, there's some zom- Marvel zombies in it. It's uh, Captain Marvel gets turned pretty, is gets turned. Um, it seems like uh, the Imperial Guard from uh, Shiar, Shiar, thank you, are all zombified now. Um, and it seems like all it takes is almost a touch, or you know, they basically basic contact. It seems like it's turning them into zombies, um, and uh, the book is—it's actually pretty good. It's not as good as the uh, Kurtman zombies, Mama zombies book, and that came out years ago. Um, but I think the main reason why, big surprise, the main reason why I was attracted to this series is that it's all about you know those the, the heroes that get zombified, like Captain America, Thor, you know the Fantastic Four, except Reed hasn't been turned yet. Um, Johnny gets turned. We don't see the, the thing get turned yet. Iron Man gets ripped apart. 
Um, and these heroes start to come back to Earth. And Spider-Man is watching the Fantastic Four, you know, the kids and all that, and the Future Foundation. So that that's how the book ends. The story, the basically the biggest thing which drew, drew me to it, because you know me, I'm a big Spider-Man fan, is that the zombies come back to Earth and that he's going to have a ragtag group of heroes try and protect, you know, the, the, the Earth. real 616 Spider-Man is? Or? No, so this, this, this is, they go back to that Earth, whatever Earth it is. I didn't really say what Earth it was what Marvel Universal was, but um, they basically go back to that Earth that they, that the, it's, you know, it takes place in. And um, Spider-Man just sees a big fireball coming down and whatnot. And, that, and that's how the issue ends. Um, pretty good for the first issue. You know, it's, it's, it's kind of like one of those things where Marvel's still trying to like, grasp on to that, that Marvel. I'm milk that cow. You know, <laughs> um, uh, the Walking Dead's over, if you don't already know the uh, book. And that's something that's like was like getting kind of stale, like the TV show is getting kind of stale. Um, I, I I think even though what you said, Stegman is uh, bringing back, uh, Donny Cates is bringing back Cates, yeah. uh, um, the Marvel Zombies 2 at the end of his run. <sighs> even though I, I thoroughly enjoyed this issue, it's kind of kind of give the zombie thing, you know, a rest. I think that whole zombie thing is dying off. I personally, I've never been a big zombie. My wife is a huge zombie fan. Like, whenever I ask her, like, what movie would you like to see from Marvel? Every single time, it's Marvel Zombies. Marvel yeah. Zombies every single time. And she, she's a huge Walking Dead. She's always been like since I've, I've met her. She's always yeah. been a huge like you know Day of the Dawn of the Dead, all those guys like uh, Shaun of the Dead. Mm. <laughs> it's one of the first movies we could actually watch together that involves zombies. But um, yeah, I mean, it sounds. I mean, I've read some of the issues. They were fun. Um, yeah. the, the one you're describing right now, driving a uh, hollowed out Galactic spaceship, that sounds fucking awesome to yeah. me. Uh, I know they're doing that in the Avengers book right now where they have a hollowed out Celestial that they're using as like a base, like, you know, in, Ant yeah. in Antarctica. But they don't really utilize it that well, I guess. But uh, in this one, it sounds like, yeah, fucking, they, he can... I don't know how they're doing it because I, I think doing what you need is like an, an alive cosmic, you know, power cosmic to like to navigate them, but I don't know. It's uh, Super Surfer is the, basically oh. in the heart <laughs> of it all. So, yeah. I, and it's funny you mention that because I forgot all about that part. Basically, like, they, they go into this one part of, you know, Galactus' body. I'm assuming it's the heart. And there's, like, a pool of blood. And out comes, uh, you know, Silver Surfer zombie. Oh, uh, awesome. You know, yeah. I'm gonna, you know, now I want to check this out definitely now. Um, I mean, it's, it's definitely good. It seems like the general consensus is that uh, zombies are the supreme rulers of the universe, that they can beat anyone. Um, sure. Even <laughs> even in deceased, they very easily became zombies. All the superheroes in that, Superman, you name it, they all became zombies pretty quick. Um, so even even like uh, in the Walking Dead universe, I find it hard to believe that the zombies were able to take over so quickly with all the technology that we have. Well, it kind of depends what zombie. I mean, like if you're like regular, like Walking Dead zombies, no. But if you're yeah. like sentient zombies, like like the Marvel zombies in, in the yeah. book, I mean, yeah, maybe I guess so. I mean, you're kind of like you know a. Uh, but even uh, them, I feel like they would it would they would have better protection against being bit, so to speak, or whatnot. Like, or if you're crack. a zombie, like 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 the Marvel zombies, I mean, like it's not like you're like just like brain dead. Like, it's like you know yeah. you basically have this like a, a non healer fa healing factor, but still using the advantage of a healing factor where it's like, oh, my arm got knocked off, but who gives a shit. I yeah. still freaking like, <laughs> it's like you know I mean, that kind of thing. They they definitely Marvel definitely brought this back because of uh, DC doing deceased. Um, oh yeah, they they back, which was actually was a pretty decent um, story arc, and even that's still ongoing. And they finally did their own version of Marvel Zombies, um, which, but which, I, which I hear is awesome too. I, I haven't even checked that book out, but I've heard nothing but good. I read the, I read the original one, and you know this was one that kind of like had took pleasure and bashing Batman to the, all the Batman fans. And, you know, Batman was one of the first heroes to go. So I was like, <laughs> you know, <laughs> um, it was tough seeing the Bat family be the first ones to go. Like, yeah, as you guys know, Tim Drake's my favorite, you know, yeah, Robin and all that. So, but, hey, this book was actually a really good read. Um, you know. I'll, I'm checking it out. The, the, the way you just, I'm definitely going to check out. Just, as much as I, I think that they, they keep bashing this with a dead stick, the zombie thing. 
just like me with Spy Man, I, I give it, give it, give it, give it, give it, give it. I, I, I agree. Well, first of all, I've never been a big fan. Like I said, I've never been a big fan of zombies. But the whole Galactus ship and Silver Surfer coming out of a pool of that, that sounds so metal to me. And I, I'm on board. You have my money right there. I'll, I'll definitely check it out. Galactus kind of going through a little bit of a renaissance lately as far as the comics and video games and everything else yeah. go. Uh, yeah, good, good on. Uh, I think that's real name. I, I, I don't know. <laughs> Are they setting up for the next big bad Marvel MCU villain? They they have to finish the first. They, they have to finish the twenty five projects they have greened up right now as it is. Uh, it'd be nice if we see him in Eternals, but um, honestly, I, I've seen Eternals. The, 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 we I talked talk about Eternals a minute ago when it comes to the new series being launched. Um, the thing about Eternals is if you're not going to go full Kirby, which I've seen the costumes, and honestly, we haven't seen anything live action. We haven't seen any uh, some any um, like visuals, but I mean, if if you're not going Kirby, then what's the point? No one gives a yeah. shit. That was the only thing the comic had going for it was, was, was Kirby, you know? Well, hopefully hopefully the movie does that when it comes out, that it goes full Kirby. Because in the Doctor Strange movie, um, when he goes into the... Uh, dem- they go Dicko. Dem- yeah, very Dicko-esque. And I, I, I remember me and Patrick were talking about the time when Thanos appeared and he said, holy fuck, why not? And there was a bunch of little kids there. I yeah. almost yelled that out. When I saw that in Doctor Strange, I was like, "Holy! F- oh wait, there's kids here." <laughs> <laughs> See, I, I love the part where uh, in I think it's in Guardians Two where it shows the Celestials. Mm. I think it's in Guardians where they show the Celestials. Um, so that, that they go Kirby, um, and, and and Thor Ragnarok. Um, there's a little half and half Jack Kirby, Walt Simonson. I like yeah. that. Um, but from what I've seen from the Eternals, as far as um, uh, concept art and the costumes go, it looks like they're not really leaning into it, which I think is a huge, yeah. huge mistake. Um, but it'd be cool if Galactus shows up in there. I mean, like, but I mean, and hopefully he's not a big cloud of smoke and yeah. he actually has that big cool, like, you know. But when people try to rationalize that, I'm like, no, no. Give me yeah. that big purple giant. And the only homage they played to it was that the cloud looked like the helmet head, like his helmet. Man, that's the thing, too, when people are like, you know, like, well, you don't, you, the, the costume looks stupid. And it's like, it's all stupid. Yeah. Like, you know, it's like, what are, you, what are you expecting from a Fantastic Four movie with a guy made out of rock and yeah. a guy who stretches? Like, it's, like it's, it's supposed to be corny and dumb looking, but wicked fun. Yeah. <laughs> you know? They stop trying to make it serious and, like, you know, and, like, and just, just lean into the, the goofiness of it. Which is the thing with comics, too. Like, you know, I, I, as much as I love comics and, like, I, and, you know, I take it seriously – not seriously, but I mean, like, I, it's been a big part of my life. Very, very yeah. passionate about it. Besides my family, I think I love comics the most, besides mm-hmm. my, fa- uh, my family. Um, but I'm not, it's not lost on me how fucking stupid this shit is. Yeah. <laughs> and how good it's, it's, you know, don't, don't. When I think about it, like, realistically, like, you know, a Spider-Man costume in live action. Like, what can I, you I, only do so much? I mean, you know, the, everyone complained about the amazing Spider-Man suit or, like, even the Tobey Maguire suit looked look too real for a kid to create. I, I don't know. Complain about you know, um, you know, Spider Man and the, to- the Tom Holland Spider Man uh, having Tony Stark make a suit. Peter couldn't come up with that, and and as a teenager, as an adult, he could. I'm not saying he couldn't as an adult because he did in the comic book. He he did make his own suit as a teenager as well, but like realistically. The, the the reverse Scarlet Spider suit, as I call it. Yeah. Of course any kid would make that. If I was a superhero, my costume would look exactly like that. I, I got to tell you, I don't know if it's the fact that, like, it's such an underdog movie right now, but um, I, I don't hate the original Amazing Spider-Man suit as much as I used to anymore. I, 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 I kind of appreciate they tried something new with it. There's, there's some parts that I don't like, but I do. I am a fan of trends on yeah. – on, I do like that. Um, yeah. <laughs> so I, I I I mean the the Amazing Spider-Man movies, the first suit was was it looked cool when it was in motion, but when he was just standing there, it kinda looked silly. Um but the the Amazing Spider-Man 2 suit is literally the most accurate Spider-Man. I love that suit. And <laughs> people bash that movie and I, I enjoyed it. I I I think back if they kept some of those deleted scenes in, it would have made more sense, in my opinion. Is it the greatest Spider-Man movie? Is there a lot of flaws? Yes, there is. But I, I did enjoy it. It's the most comic book accurate Peter Parker that we've seen so far. Yeah, I'll agree with that. Oh, no, no, not Peter Parker. Uh, I tried Spider- to make a little bit of a punk, a little bit, but... Yeah. Um, I got to tell you, um, going back to the episode we did uh, earlier this week, 
I, I want to see orange and purple Spider-Man. <laughs> I don't know what it is. Before I was like, that's stupid. Now I'm like, God damn it. I want just really quick. I want to see an orange and purple Spider-Man now. I thought I was, I may have dreamed it or I might have been in a wizard magazine. I remember seeing a uh, yellow an orange and purple or yellow and purple. You were thinking I mean, of, um, and I've mentioned this before. There's that old eight, uh, 70s, 80s uh, Halloween costume. Mm. I forget the name of the costume designer, but it was basically um, uh, yellow, red, and blue Spider-Man costume. And we've all seen. I can actually put a picture in here if you want. Yeah. I actually, I actually do a drawing of it that I can actually put up. Uh, but uh, that was this. So if you go on YouTube, you can go down a rabbit hole as far as who create, designed Spider-Man, mm. and it kind of goes back and forth between Ditko. Uh, Kirby and this costume designer, which is it's almost like you know, no one really knows who actually designed the Spider Man costume. Yeah. Everybody kind of just like stole things from each other and no one's saying it. Um, so it, it turns out the Spider Man might have been designed by a Halloween costume guy and, and nobody involved in comics whatsoever. So, <laughs> I, I, don't I will know. say though that that Kirby cost the Kirby uh, cover of Amazing Spider Man or Amazing Fantasy 15 looked pretty sweet though. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I won't put it to any sort. I mean, yeah, I, nowadays I'm I'm not as like you know stuck on like one certain vision or interpretation of things. I like all different kinds of like uh, interpretations of characters. I know I, when I when I saw it, the Kirby one seemed more real. I'm not bashing Dicko because he was a phenomenal, phenomenal Spider-Man artist. Yeah, but it was just him holding the guy, web slinging through like downtown traffic. I thought it was actually pretty good. I, 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 you know, I mean, I'm not going to complain about Kirby and Dicko. Like, their, their worst work, their most uninspired work is, like, you know, leaps and bounds on beyond yeah. anything I could ever do, or most people could do, to be honest with you. Yeah. Um, holy shit, that we get off topic. Um, as always. But um, I guess that's going to do it for our review show for this week. Yeah. Um, so, we, four, four books, two Batman, Batman 98, Batman the Adventure Continues, uh, number four, uh, Wolverine number five, and Marvel Zombies Resurrection. Uh, number one, uh, mm -hmm. all all good reviews. I mean, so far, yeah. I mean, as far, I mean, I guess like you know, is, after, in this COVID uncertain times, the one thing that is certain is some some good quality comics coming out. Um, mm -hmm. There's a lot of shitty comics coming out too, but we don't, yeah. we don't really talk about those unless we have to. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm sure it'll come up eventually. If there's some series that I'm like just you know out of habit, I buy because I'm 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 a, I'm a slave to the character or the concept, but. I, I don't agree with the direction they're going into. And we'll get into those in later episodes. And you'll yeah. find out if you like and subscribe again. Um, mm -hmm. make, uh, also subscribe. So you, there's tons of videos on the channel to check out. Um, and thank you for watching, guys. And we're going to see you next time. Yep. Bye-bye. See you later. Da -na -na -na. Oh, come on, you fuckers. Think that just because a guy reads comics, he can't start uh, some uh, shit? Uh, I'll fucking take all you on.